So, hey, hi, uh, thanks, thanks for uh, joining Mr. Shashad, uh, the, the head of partnerships at Shadiyam. So I'm, I'm really glad to have you on our show. Uh, so we have this Web3 Wisdom podcast where we talk to some of the brilliant minds in the space. So just to give you a glimpse of uh, the previous episodes, we have had uh, the, the, the pleasure of having Mr. Yatsiyu, the chairman of Animoca Brands, uh, the Sandy Carter from Unstoppable Domains, Mr. Paul from Coin Telegraph, and there you are. We have Mr. Shashad, the head of partnerships at Shadiyam, and and glad to have you, sir. How My are you? My pleasure, Praveen. First of all, uh, thank you very much for uh, including me in, in in the company of uh, people you mentioned. So that's a privilege and an honor. The second thing I wanted to congratulate you on a successful launch, uh, which you've done, Bridge Bridge Branch. We're very excited to see, you know, another project coming out of India, doing extremely well and looking forward to support and collaborate with you in any manner or form. So once again, uh, you know, congratulations are of the order. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, it, it's, yeah, it, it was uh, interesting times, challenging times at Bits Crunch. And, 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 and I'm glad, I'm super proud of the team. Uh, guys, back in India, back in Germany, we have colleagues sitting in South Korea and, and uh, Belgium. So credits to everybody who have uh, kept their head cool through the launch. We have successfully launched, and in what it's it's been a month uh, since the launch, and we are we are going strong from strength to strength. So yeah, I mean uh, we are here to know more about you and Shadiyam today, and that's the reason for having you. Maybe we can we can take the bit scrunch conversations to later point. Sure. Uh, so. How did you stumble into Web3, uh, Shashad? What, what was the uh, hook for you to come into Web3? So, <laughs> um, like things in the last few years, uh, COVID has uh, displaced and uh, changed lives of a lot of people. And uh, thankfully for me, I landed up in uh, Web3. And this was uh, partly just because of coincidence. Umar mm -hmm. Sayyad was one of the co-founders of Shadium. Uh, invited me to the project which he was building, which is Shardis, which is basically the underlying protocol layer on which Shardium was built. So I joined him in uh, August of 2020 in the midst of uh, COVID. And from then on started pushing forth. Uh, he basically got me as the head of uh, business development and uh, operations. So I started pushing forward. And uh, very soon we started seeing some traction. We started seeing go growth until uh, you know, October 21st of 2021, I was doing a presentation and I had sent out an email to the 500 plus people whom we had in our list. And mm -hmm. one of them was Nishal Shetty. So he mm -hmm. attended the show and three days later, we got a call from him that he wanted to talk to us and he was looking for his next, next big assignment uh, mm -hmm. after Wazirex. And that's how Shardium was born. We launched Shardium on February 2nd of uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. And it's been slightly over a year. It's been a phenomenal journey uh, and something I really cherish. So. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, every, everybody can see the numbers. Everybody can see the metrics, the traction and, 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 uh, and the ballparks, right? So what exactly is Chardium? Uh, and, and could you please simplify that to a, a layman? Probably, yeah. Sure, absolutely. So basically, we are building a layer one blockchain. Uh, mm -hmm. A layer one blockchain would, if you were to think of it, you would immediately think of the likes of an Ethereum, right? Who's been one of the longest uh, blockchains in the industry, having mm -hmm. built in 2014, 2015 timeline. So we basically uh, were looking at building something which is uh, on the lines of an Ethereum, mm -hmm. except taking some of the issues which Ethereum faces on a regular basis and resolving the problems. Um, which it has. So Omar basically, he was in the space since uh, 2010. Uh, he got into blockchain at that time. He saw some of the existing problems and which which he, you know, saw would come into play as the community grew, as the demand grew, and as the number of users grew. So he started writing an algorithm which took care of one of the biggest issues which Ethereum today faces, and that is scalability. So. The, the biggest problem we have is Ethereum cannot sc scale more than 15 transactions per second. Now they have tried various methods. They're still working on various options, and maybe they will come out with a with the with the resolution to that. But one of the ways of doing it is to you know build a ground up solution on 
another platform and, and take it forth. Mm -hmm. So we at Shardim are trying to do exactly that. We are building it ground up and resolving mm -hmm. uh, scalability and transactions per second and speed, which I think is going to be critical when we start onboarding the hundreds and millions of users. And that's what our goal is. We want to build a network which is accessible globally, which mm -hmm. has very low transaction fee, mm -hmm. has fixed fee. So you're not dealing with the bidding process, which you start seeing. So just one of the transactions I did last week, I paid something like $38 on a single <laughs> transaction. Yeah. And so big prices are back with the, you know, the bull market. Bull is, but, bull is back. <laughs> that's right. So we are trying to resolve that particular issue where we offer the ability of people to spend as low as one cent per transaction. Oh. That becomes extremely important in emerging markets, in the emerging world. Mm -hmm. So places like India, mm -hmm. places like Vietnam, mm -hmm. places like Africa, you know, mm -hmm. where people want to work on blockchain and, mm -hmm. and want to do mm -hmm. transactions, but have mm -hmm. a lot of difficulty because of the price. Mm -hmm. Cool. I mean, uh, it's, it's a, definitely a challenging task and an uphill task that you have taken up and and from the progress that i have seen so far you guys are doing an impeccable job uh, right i mean to in in the world of so many l2s and l3s and and whatnot to to go and and to do what ethereum did but in a cost effective way is something that is brilliant and 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 when you said uh, just going back to the previous question here when you said you stumbled upon web3 just by coincidence what were you doing before? What was your previous work experience? Where were you working? And, and where are you currently residing? Maybe you can you can also share sure. where you're dialing it from. Yeah. yeah. So I started my career with a small company out of India called HCL. Uh, you know, at that time, HCL was a very small entity. And I spent a couple of years in their uh, business unit called NIIT. Uh, that was uh -huh. where I started. And then we decided to move out of India. I joined Lockheed Martin uh, a few years later. Mm. Um, spent about 11 years with Lockheed in various roles, uh, primarily being the a director within the company where I was responsible for uh, uh, IT services. So I've managed large scale pro projects which range from, you know, uh, mm -hmm. building things which I, you know, was involved with, as, as well as managing teams as large as 180 people uh, globally. Mm -hmm. So spent time with that. Uh, at the same time, my wife was building her own startup, which was in the education mm -hmm. sphere. She has a master's in education and the goal was to build a school. So in uh, 2000, we bought our first school and started uh, working in Dallas. So that is where I'm based out of, I live in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And uh, from one, we went to five, uh, things were great. Uh, you know, I was more or less mm -hmm. on cruise control. And uh, 2020, you know, COVID came along. Mm -hmm. Umar's mm -hmm. daughter and my daughter grew up in school together. So I've known Umar mm -hmm. for a very long time and okay. he, wanted to get me involved one way or the other into the blockchain mm -hmm. space. So he kept, you know, talking about it. Eventually the, this opportunity did come about mm -hmm. and I joined. So mm -hmm. thankfully Shadium is a baby of uh, two very, very sophisticated mm -hmm. uh, people in this space. One of mm -hmm. them being Michel Shetty, who, you know, mm -hmm. obviously you know him because of Azirex and mm -hmm. what he did, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the Indian crypto space. And Omar, mm -hmm. who has built several large scale uh, projects, uh, including mm -hmm. uh, at places like Zynga, where he was involved in the Farmville project, and mm -hmm. uh, Yahoo, where he was uh, incorporating Soundcast, which was supposed to be mm -hmm. a precursor to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's picked up several patents on the way. He was also involved in the Mars rover project with NASA. Mm -hmm. So his, mm -hmm. his focus has always been trying to build mm -hmm. something which is mm -hmm. uh, scalable. And mm -hmm. I think this is an excellent extremely good alliance of two people you know coming yeah. together i mean definitely i i, I didn't know this fact that uh, your 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 child and omar's child did schooling together uh, back in dallas so that's that's a nice info uh, that i'm i'm not sure a lot of uh, community shadium community knows so thanks for sharing such a personal insight as well in this part and and uh, when you say shadium i mean i have seen um, a massive community, right? Shadium, in fact, has one of the biggest communities uh, in, in terms of uh, growth, community growth. I, I would say Shadium is, is among the top, top two, top three of all times. So what, uh, what sort of projects are trying to build on Shadium? That's my first question. And what advice uh, would you give a founder? Let's say if, if I'm a founder, if I'm starting up something new, 
I would I would want to explore a chain. What advice would you give to a founder who want who could build on top of Shardium? That's a very very good question. I typically meet between uh, six to ten projects on a weekly basis when they, you know, call upon me and uh, brainstorm some of the ideas. The first thing I tell them is make sure that you are able to monetize what you're building. So there has to be revenue at the end of it all. If you, if it's not revenue driven, then it's a just a dream. So what happens is most people come in, then they have this fantastic idea, but they, at, at the end of the tunnel, I mean, there is no money to be made. So how do you sustain something like this? How do you make it grow and how do you scale it? So these are the questions, you know, I typically ask, uh, you know, the second thing is that, you know, even if you're building a me too, so if you're looking at an existing project and you try to copy, replicate, or, uh, you know, uh, do a sort of a hero worship on that project and, and build on, I would say, look at some different shift because what is critical is you have to be different. You cannot just copy something and say, I'm better doesn't work. Nope. So you have nope. to have your USPs, you have to have your differential points, and you have to have something which is, you know, se separates and segregates you from uh, the project which is already live. So that is another aspect of it. The third is thing, uh, third thing I advise is, you know, don't spend too much money when you're trying to build, bootstrap the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Raise money, but raise is something, look at it as a loan which is being given to you by VCs. Mm -hmm. It's not money for you to burn and splurge. So, which is why, you know, Shardim is also very conservative when we do our spend. We haven't had these huge boots, so we haven't had these huge sponsorships, but we've been building the project before, you know, we go live. So that's been something, you know, I advise uh, these projects to go on. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, everybody can absolutely see that, right? I mean, a lot of companies, especially in the bull, people go after boots at conferences. I mean, no offense to projects who does that, but uh, rather uh, even I, I would I would spend a huge chunk of money on building, especially at the early stages, right? I mean, if you are a Google, if you are an Amazon or if you are an established project, let's say in crypto terms, if you are a Bitcoin, if you are Ethereum, you have you can afford uh, such spendings. Uh, but but uh, spending too early, I would say, especially spending in the first year of the project, in the second year of the project is something that I would also advise the founders to do and, and rightly pointed out. Uh, so, I mean, when, when you were talking about the the child uh, factor with Omar, uh, that's a personal connection that you revealed here. Uh, do you have something else to reveal that you haven't shared in any other podcast or any other interviews before? <laughs> Not really. I think that is uh, probably, you know, something which I haven't spoken in public and which I did. But the other thing is that I come from a background which is uh, from the movie dome. My dad used to own theaters oh, yeah. in India. And we had also a film distribution business. So projects like NFT and these things are very dear to me. Uh, so that's oh. something which you know it comes naturally because I've seen oh. uh, a lot of that uh, during my childhood. And I used to be one of the most popular kids in school because of the ticket passes. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine <laughs> people running behind you for uh, for tickets, <laughs> uh, sort of braving you. I can imagine that whole scenario. <laughs> good. 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 And 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 obviously, I mean, talking about the community, uh, back to the topic again. So Shardium has one of the biggest communities. What has been the secret of success, if, if I may ask? Because there are a lot of companies out there who are trying to crack the partnerships thing and the community thing in, in general, but very few are able to crack it, right? Very few are able to bring organic traction, right? Uh, so what is the essence of it? Because I see, keep seeing uh, posts, keep seeing uh, workshops uh, that were conducted by Shardium across a uh, country like India right, and, and beyond India. I have I've seen uh, workshops in Africa and in, in Vietnam, in Philippines. Uh, what's the secret of essence for this, Shashad? It's, it's very simple, uh, Vijay. I think what uh, we basically have done something, it's, uh, it's not unique, but it's the way we have executed on that. So Nishal came up with this idea called uh, Proof of Community, where he said that let's start looking at building, uh, mm -hmm. you know, communities at a grassroots level. Let's not just talk about Shardium, but let's talk about, you know, blockchain. Let's talk about Web3. Let's talk about the growth in this industry and how we could involve, you know, uh, the common uh, developer, the, the average person onto the community. Mm -hmm. So we started hosting these events. We started with India. I mean, India primarily because we are India centric for two reasons. One is, uh, you know, we have most of our developers, uh, quite a few of them, a large team in India. And 
both of the co-founders and myself are uh, all born in India. So we decided to start there and said we'll do, you know, work, work here first and then take it, uh, you know, globally. So we started holding these small events where we ex estimated probably between 30 to 50 people uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in a university campus uh, outlet or at a coffee shop or at, you know, a workspace mm -hmm. area where we would, you know, get them and talk about blockchain, talk about Web3. And it started with that. Uh, we started seeing that from the 30s and 40s, we started getting 100 to 150 people show up. And that started snowballing into, we started mm -hmm. getting invites from various uh, university campuses, from various uh, hackathon groups, from various, you know, individuals who wanted to be hosts. And then we started, you know, self-propelling it, where anybody who has, you know, a campus, who has a place where you want to host this, we will support you. We will have, you know, somebody on the ground who can come and talk, mm -hmm. as well as invite somebody. Now we have a much larger group. So, uh, you know, get people involved where they could come and share their thoughts and processes, how they've made it to where they have made it. And that started snowballing. So having said that, you know, we that started snowballing into places like Africa, where we started seeing traction in Nigeria. And we have done, you know, events that are 20 plus centers. Then I visited Japan and Korea. And while during the visit, I snowballed that those events there and just... Uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday, we had another event in Japan and uh, last week we had in Korea and there's another one coming up in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. So this started, mm -hmm. you know, traction. We also started doing it in Vietnam. And mm -hmm. eventually, you know, since we have a team based in the U.S., we started working on mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, segment. So we did one at the Stanford University. We have one being mm -hmm. offered through Howard. And uh, all mm -hmm. that is, you know, started to snowball. So we will see a lot more traction mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. With that, we also started something very different. We said, let's do a backpack tour and let's go to universities. Mm -hmm. so let's make a list of, you know, 60 universities mm -hmm. plus and have somebody, a couple of people go from place to mm -hmm. place and talk about blockchain. And that gave mm -hmm. us enormous amount of traction. And that mm -hmm. we started seeing mm -hmm. again. Now there's demand for when is the next, you know, backpack tour coming up. So that's, mm -hmm. that's something which we have seen and that's been extremely effective. Mm -hmm. But it was a great idea to begin with. Then, uh, you know, we started uh, implementing it. The execution, again, uh, uh, the team mm -hmm. in India has been phenomenal. Uh, also, the team globally. And the Shardim mm -hmm. community at large. I mean, everybody steps up and helps. Yeah. So that is something which is mm -hmm. just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, impressive numbers, impressive stats. And, and one thing that you forgot to mention is you were doing all these in the beer market, right? Yes. Anyone, anyone could do this in the bull. Anyone could could throw parties, throw uh, workshops or whatever in the bull where they can attract more audience. But when there was scarcity, when there was no retail, that's when you educated people. I, I would call it this way, right? Rather right. than having meetups as a term, you sort of educated the community well, and and I, I would. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm really happy uh, to to know Shadiam uh, to to know the history to know the connections between all these facts and just just best wishes from from Team Bitscrunch and myself and keep going right yes and if you could do thousand plus events in beer I'm I'm really excited for what's to come in the bull <laughs> so best wishes so we are that. we are very excited we also have launched Shadiam University now which is okay. where we are offering free courses, uh, you know, online. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, we started with a couple and then you'll see a lot more being added on. So I think that's again, uh, education remains key. Uh, I think mm -hmm. education is something which uh, you can do even in the bear or the bull market. And as long as you work something out, which is cost effective, then that is very sustainable. I think mm -hmm. those are those are key uh, things to work around. Good, good, good. So alpha net, beta net and is the main net <laughs> going to be the next one? Any yeah. alphas that you can drop? <laughs> the question, I just came back from uh, DAS uh, in London, uh, the Digital Asset Symposium. And uh -huh. that, that was a question which I had at every uh, you know meeting when <laughs> main net. So uh, Vijay, a couple of things. What you mentioned is uh, earlier is that what we're trying to resolve and what we're trying to build uh -huh. has never been done before. I mean, this is uh, sharding as total, uh, as the main uh, uh, bill for a layer one has not been done uh, successfully uh, mm -hmm. yet. So what the, the problem we're trying to resolve is, is not easy and which mm -hmm. is why we have taken so much of time as we've mm -hmm. taken to launch mainnet. Uh, having said that, we are almost there. 
So mm. we are at a point where uh, the, the the beta net has been up and about for about a year, and uh, right now we're just erasing the kinks and uh, removing all the bugs. We are mm. just in the midst of a security audit. Uh, mm. We've had the first phase being completed. Now we're getting onto phase two of that. Mm. So we should have all those reports coming. We're mm. also launching a bug bounty, uh, which will be open to developers globally to do some white hacking and tell us, you know, what we need to fix before we get to mainnet. So these are two initiatives which we have ongoing. We also will be launching an incentivized testnet. So mm -hmm. that should be coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, look forward to that. Uh, there are going to be airdrops on that. And we have mm -hmm. all the details on our website uh, on, on what and who can and how you can participate in our incentivized mm -hmm. testnet. So these are very exciting times. I mean, we expect, uh, you know, the numbers to be uh, way through the roof. Uh, when we launched our testnet, we started with 150 nodes from uh, the project itself, from Shardium. We expect it mm -hmm. to be at about 1,500 uh, mm -hmm. by the end of a week. Uh, surprise, surprise, we were at 37,000, So, which I'm told is the highest number for any layer one. So again, for an incentivized testnet, we are expecting some you know, very, very good numbers, very you know, uh, gigantic numbers. So again, thanking the community for all their dedication, their support, and their patience. I mm -hmm. think the community has been extremely patient with us and uh, working mm -hmm. us with us through as we you know go through these final stages. But mainnet is definitely planned uh, towards the middle to the uh, half of the year, somewhere around there. Right? Uh -huh. Being software yeah. for this long, uh, we mm -hmm. always know it's always a moving target, right? Yeah. But uh, okay. we're definitely shooting to do that uh, late Q3, uh, late Q2, early Q3. So that's what we're uh, focusing okay. on. Okay. So there you go. That's the alpha uh, around half of the year, which is not so far. We are almost finishing this quarter in in, in a week. Uh, this is the last week before Easter. So yeah, uh, in, 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 in three months, you can expect something big from Shadium. So thanks for sharing the alpha. So what next? What next in terms of, let's say, community growth? I mean, community is already massive. Uh, events, initiatives, uh, you talk about university, Shadium University and and uh, workshops, initiatives. What next? What are the other alphas that you can share on the community side? What can a community expect? Let's say if I'm a layman sitting in Munich, right? I'm, I'm in Munich, Germany. How can I be part of the community and what can I expect going forward? So, uh, you know, I think community building will still remain something paramount. We are coming mm -hmm. to a point where we are going to see a, a multi-layer, multi-blockchain world. Uh, interoperability mm -hmm. will become key and again you will have projects which will you know be on several networks uh, as we move forward so community is will be something which will be critical and that will drive you know the the usership as well as the volume i mean your tvl mm -hmm. will obviously depending on you know how much your community is and uh, uh, where your community lies uh, geographically as well as you know what your community is all about you know the projects mm -hmm. so those things will become very very critical uh, anybody can partake in, in Shardium. We are, we are a permissionless network, uh, a proof of stake. So we are actually working towards a one-click imp implementation for anybody who wants to run a node. Uh, we have several of our uh, providers who will be available on uh, shardium.org to have a look at and choose. And uh, I would recommend uh, run the nodes, especially in the incentivized testnet. You know, there are bounties to be given. So make sure you're part of that. That is one thing. From the other point of view is uh, for, for builders, I would recommend you to you know, look at uh, projects which uh, are of real value uh, to keep building and some of the things which uh, will continue to, to be dominant in the Web3 space mm -hmm. are uh, DeFi. I think DeFi is going to mm -hmm. come back and be huge again. Uh, it's always been there, but now we're going to see a lot of you know new things happening in that space. I see gaming mm -hmm. becoming very big. And uh, for Shardium, gaming is a very important uh, sector segment mm -hmm. as well because of the speed of the transaction and the low cost. Because the average user doesn't want to be bothered with high fees. So if you're able to mm -hmm. offer you know, ease and low fees, it becomes extremely attractive uh, for people. Mm -hmm. Also, I think uh, real world assets are going to be huge. I think that's a segment which uh, is going to take uh, uh, you know, growth, uh, you've seen uh, BlackRock announce something in the last week or so. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you mm -hmm. see a lot of people, uh, you know, get into the space. And I think that's mm -hmm. actually a monetized tokenization of mm -hmm. uh, an asset. I think that's going to be really big. Mm -hmm. 
So watch out for that particular segment. If you're building around it, I would highly recommend, you know, dig deeper and uh, do something mm -hmm. well on, on that arena. Good, good, good. So yeah, thanks uh, for uh, sharing all the insights around Shadium, around the community and the initiatives. Do you want to say something uh, to the listeners on behalf of uh, Shadium or, or in general? Is there anything that you want like to share? Sure. I think, uh, you know, Shadium is, is more of a case book for people to see how to build. I think that is uh, something, you know, where we have done it with very, very uh, low cost uh, from our uh, perspective, as well as, you know, we've done it effectively. Uh, we haven't done any large uh, parties, as Vijay was just mentioning earlier, which happens during the bull time. We have stayed away from all of that, but we've done it correctly. And uh, we, I feel that this is a good uh, case book, a study to uh, learn from. But also, you know, talking to Vijay, he's also done something uh, incredible. I have watched his journey as well for the last, having met him in the last two years plus uh, that this is in Austin. That was the first time. No, actually, we met in uh, New York NFT. New York NFT NYC 2022. Correct. So I've watched him and I've seen him grow with leaps and bounds and he's an extremely well for himself. So these are all playbooks by which you can learn from and you can you know build on. And the critical thing is, uh, you know, build first and then have a party. I think that's that's extremely yep. important. And rightly pointed out and when the bull is coming this is a much needed info much needed boost to the founders uh, who are listening right uh, because a lot of founders get distracted easily uh, after getting uh, fancy funding rounds or doing fancy funding rounds and uh, that's a timely advice so thanks a lot Shashat uh, and and just before we wrap up we used to have a little rapid fire uh, round uh, so I, I won't take a take up a lot of time Maybe three or four questions, and then we uh, call it quits. So, what's your favorite city? I mean, you you shouldn't tell Dallas. That's out of the equation. <laughs> so, other than Dallas, what's your favorite city and why? So, uh, thankfully, I've had the privilege of, of traveling quite a bit. Uh, one of the cities which uh, always comes to mind uh, whenever I talk about is Luzern in Switzerland. I think that's a city uh, I love. Uh, there's also Hyderabad where I was born, and that will always remain, uh, you know, very dear to me. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Luzern is is one of the uh, beautiful cities uh, that you can come across. I I live in Munich, which is what three three and a half four hours from there, uh, from here. Cool. Okay. And uh, what's your favorite hobby? Uh, do you have uh, a favorite hobby or or a physical activity that you would like to share to the audience? My hobby is music. I do listen to a lot of music, and, and that's a combination of uh, whether it is uh, uh, classical or uh, contemporary or jazz or uh, puzzles or uh, Indian music. Uh, it's a combination of everything. I mean, I like music uh, per se, so that's something I spend, uh, you know, whatever little time I have. It's also a way to relax. So. Cool. That's great to know. And uh, who is your biggest inspiration outside the web3 space well that's a that's a good question now uh, i typically have always found people who, who perceive and win to be my role models and uh, one of the names which comes to mind is uh, somebody like uh, jk rowling uh, she fought you know adversity she fought uh, rejection she fought uh, marriage and a divorce she fought death of family and uh, she actually built an idea which became you know literally people have lived through. I mean, uh, the Harry Potter series was something, not only was it a book art of, I mean, it's a book of fiction, which became an art literally, but she also brought uh, reading back to the schools. And I give her credit for that because uh, at that particular time, America was struggling with reading and the series of seven books literally got people back to libraries. So I think uh, a definite credit goes to her for that as well. But uh, the, the will to succeed was, was was just uh, you know phenomenal. Phenomenal, yep, yep, absolutely. So one last question. So if not Web three, if you could choose any other career, what it would be and and why? I'm revealing a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would have uh, loved to be a doctor. I mean, uh, uh, that okay. was something which uh, 
I would, I'm still passionate about. I mean, it's not just the fact that you're uh, curing human misery, but it's also the fact that you can give so much back to the community. Yeah. I think that is, uh, you know, something I would have uh, cherished to do. That's a wonderful uh, podcast, uh, Mr. Shashad. Uh, and I'm, I'm really glad to have you here. And then Bitscrunch, uh, Team Bitscrunch is in fact uh, very happy and, and glad to have you. So keep building, keep pushing, uh, and uh, keep nurturing young talents and, and let them build on top of Shadium quite soon. Thank you very much, Vijay. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk, talk with me. And uh, definitely would like to see your growth as well. And looking forward to building and growing together. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. Thank you.